Well, our Wednesday MPs are always ready to disagree, but in the rarest of respectful style around here. Liberal MP Roger Kuzner joins NDP Deputy Leader Megan Leslie, Conservative Finance Chair James Rajat. Welcome to you all. James, I want to get your thoughts on what the Justice Minister just said out of Manitoba. It seems like he says, look, I, I understand the decision. I just think Stephen Harper should at least try and charge forth with something on the Senate reform file. Well, but, but as you pointed out, Don, in the interview, it's very challenging. So I, I respect his position. I think it was a good interview, but I respect his position that their government's position is to abolish the Senate. But as was clarified by the Supreme Court, you need all 10 provinces to agree to that. That is very unlikely. I mean, I think we all know that that's very unlikely to happen. And for any other types of reforms, like the Prime Minister has long wanted term limits, so you could actually shorten the term limit from 45 years to eight or nine years. That's going to require, according to the Supreme Court, seven provinces representing 50 percent of the population to even have elections, as we've had in Alberta on numerous occasions, to actually ensure that people are elected in the Senate of Canada. That small uh, reform that we wanted, which would have a fundamental change, it looks like we need uh, seven provinces representing 50 percent of the population. So. The ball really is in the province's court. I mean, if 10 of them agree to abolish it, obviously that would happen. If seven representing 50 wanted to put these other reforms in place, then obviously the prime minister would be willing to engage on that because he's favored those positions for an awful long time now. Now, let's not trash talk the birthday boy, Stephen Harper, but should he try and try again <laughs> on, on trying to get these reforms moving forward, or has he done the right thing? It just says, well, let someone else try. Well, I disagree with uh, what James said when he, when he said that the ball is in the province's court. This is something that the Prime Minister ran on. The Conservatives have said, we are committed to Senate reform. We would like to uh, get rid of this, but in, if we can't, then definitely reform it. And so then we get a Supreme Court of Canada decision, a bit of a slap in the face of the Prime Minister, and he goes, oh, okay, and walks away. I mean, come on. If, if this is what you campaign on, if this is what you hold out to people to say, elect us and we will do this, you don't just give up. I thought Minister Swan put it beautifully when he said, you can't know the answer until you ask the question. Put people in the room. I mean, we have the Council of the Federation. They meet at least once a year. Sit Never down. with the Prime Minister. Never <laughs> with the Prime Minister. So sit down with them and say, what do you think? Where where can we go? Who's in? Who's out? All right, future Senator Kuzner, what's your take on that? <laughs> Is he a Senate liberal or a liberal yeah, senator? Yeah, an independent Senate, Senate liberal. Know. <laughs> uh, you know, it's a, it's a strange one. He beat this drum for six years while he was Prime Minister and long before that. 1992, uh, I think But I, I think what's become obvious is that he never, ever had a plan. He had talking points. You know, he, he had a, uh, an excuse to raise money and, you know, put money together and motivate the base and placate the base. But uh, th there was no real plan in place. And just to sort of walk away from it now is, is really... Uh, it's strange and to throw it back in with the provinces though you know and say oh we're too busy with the economy you know like Stephen McNeil's not you know engaged in the economy or you know Robert Giz or you know whatever the other premiers are I'm sure they're all concerned about the economy so uh, you know he's he's just sort of giving no, up. It's, it's can, I, can I respond to my two friends for years and years and years the Prime Minister has put forward two changes which is to have term limits which I think most Canadians would agree yeah. with and to have allow for the election of senators to sit in the upper chamber. I mean, I think most Canadians would say either elect them or abolish the chamber. I think they'd be one of either two positions. Those are reasonable positions. The Prime Minister even went to a Senate committee to argue for it, introduced in the Senate during the minority sessions. It didn't go anywhere. And now he did a reference to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court has actually said, uh, in fairness, they've said this is much more difficult than one would expect. I mean, to me, as an Albertan, I think we, in fact, led as a province in having elections where there's some accountability and some direct voter contact between the senators Can't pick and the up people the in the province. Call seven if if, if I think. could, Don? Say what, though? But say what, Don? Let's get together and talk about whether they want term yeah. limits. Or, how, how about the or, term limits, though? Okay, the, the, the guys that he's appointed so far, so, you know, he, he's got the decision back from Supreme, Supreme Court. The, the guys that he uh, originally uh, appointed, you think they're going to be walking in eight years? When the okay. eight-year term is no, up, but, but the point is, you, you make the wholesale change. You think they will? You make. Oh, Fern White's going to walk. Fern White. But Roger, walk. you make the whole change so that whether, regardless of whether you're a liberal senator or a conservative senator or independent, that applies to you. You need to make the wholesale change to the chamber itself. I mean, I mean right? this, yeah, these guys I ran on this stuff and beat the drum, eh? So I, I think it's a bailout to go back to the province. Move along. People came bored sure. of the Senate after two minutes, so let's talk about something else. <laughs> temporary job, temporary foreign workers. Now that CP's just come out with a report saying even Canadian helicopter pilots. 
pilots are being displaced by foreign workers, and even though they're hard up for employment. Uh, Roger, you're uh, banging the bongo pretty loudly in the House of Commons <laughs> today about uh, students and, and people coming over. What's your concern? What's, what new developments are happening? Not just helicopter up? pilots. Airline pilots have been, you know, they've been talking about this for three and four years, how, you know, some of the, the charter groups are coming in and, and hiring uh, temporary foreign workers during the vacation season and that. So that, you, th these issues have been around for quite some time. But the one that I raised that I was uh, really surprised that the the, uh, the the ministry sort of shuffled it off to Chris Alexander today, but, you know, this uh, Canadian Experience program where it, 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 he tells it, uh, he boasts about it being a, a bilateral agreement, a reciprocal agreement where countries benefit, Canadians benefit, young Canadians benefit, and young people from other countries benefit. We're getting hosed on it. Absolutely. Like, it, oh, you, you know, you look at a, a country like um, Poland, there's 758 young Polish people holding down jobs in Canada. We've got four Canadians working in Poland. Is that because no nice one wants to go to Poland? Cro or? Croatia. Croatia's economy. got 300, uh, over 300 uh, Croatians working here in Canada, taking those jobs uh, you know, that young Canadians might have. Right. And we've got two people working in Croatia. And, and, and country after country, you know, France, the UK, it's all disproportionate. And he was just, uh, he just got back from Ireland. He was over beating the drum, trying to get more Irish young people over here. While, since 2008, we've lost 225,000 jobs for young Canadians in this country. I'd like your thoughts on that, James, because I've seen those ads. They do say, oh, have a vacation, come to Canada, get a job and see the country while you're doing it. And I know a lot of young kids are out there and they can't find even the McDonald's jobs. Well, actually, we're studying youth employment at the Finance Committee right now, but I think, I mean, I don't think Roger would want to do away with this program. This program gives opportunities to people from other countries to come to Canada, right. but it gives opportunities to young Canadians to work overseas. Wouldn't it be quid pro quo, the numbers balance out somewhere? But are you going to do it exactly for each well, country? Exactly. I think I think you want to do it as a whole program, and you don't want to dictate to young Canadians as to where they must go. You don't want to say to them, you must go to Poland because we get a certain number of Polish young people in town. We want to give them an opportunity to where they want to go. If they want to go to Hong Kong to work in the financial sector as a young person, they should be allowed the opportunity to do so. With respect to bringing in temporary form in the program, obviously the minister has made some very strong steps. He's put a moratorium one piece of it, the whole program is under review, set up a blacklist for these companies that have created this problem. But I will tell you again, as I've said on this program almost every week, if you come to my area, there are businesses that are crying out for people to knock on their door, whether it's in the manufacturing sector, the food service, the hospitality, whatever, they are absolutely desperate for young people. So we still have a skills mismatch in certain areas, and we still have job shortages in certain regions of this country that need to be addressed. Megan, you've been very patient. <laughs> Get in there. <laughs> um, I think what it comes down to is it's a temporary foreign work worker program, but it's not temporary right now. What's happening is these, uh, we've seen, these workers are coming in and they're actually replacing uh, Canadians, people are being laid off, etc. So we need to figure out how to make the program work better. If we have a skills mismatch, like James talks about, then maybe we need to reconsider how we're letting immigrants in, right? Like maybe we need to think about who are we letting in for what purposes, what skills do they need or not need. Instead of letting in a whole bunch of doctors who end up driving taxis, maybe we do need folks to be working at McDonald's and in, in James's riding. I don't know. So let's actually or look at what is, sector. or the manufacturing sector. But temporary foreign workers are supposed to be temporary. So let's look at how we make the temporary foreign worker program work. And then let's look at where we need to fill the gaps through our immigration system. Uh, yeah, this isn't a bad program. This is a program that's been run and administered badly. We don't want to uh, end it. We want to mend it. It, it, you know, this is, it. It's critical for a lot of industries. We don't have an agricultural industry in many parts of this country if we don't have a temporary foreign workers program right. and, and other sectors too. But the tough part, listen, the, which the, the tough vote? part here is when you, you hear the CEO of McDonald's coming on and saying that he's got access to the minister. Uh, you know, it, when, when other people, other stakeholders don't have that kind of access to the minister. So an open and transparent, bringing some sunlight to the, we want to find out what kind of impact is it having on minimum wage jobs? Is it driving down is it driving down wages in, in lower We're skilled up jobs? Well, yeah. yeah, you know Alberta. the CD how has that study that uh, that's just been released four that points of uh, uh, anyway, up on the uh, unemployment. But Roger, in, in fairness, the minister was on CTV's question period and completely contradicted what the CEO from McDonald's said. 
It was interview on Sunday. So, but James, I mean, he, you did, know, he directly responded. In the late of day, he directly if we responded this stuff to it. Out. He said, in fact, that was incorrect. That was not an accurate portrayal of the conversation. In terms of engagement with people, actually, Jason's been in my writing out to the Duke Chamber, and he sat down with small business people, with medium business, with a company like Tenaris. He walked through there, and there was two shifts operating, and there was one shift that was not operating. And we asked the plan manager, we said, "What's going on?" I said, "I don't have enough people. Do you know anyone who wants to work?" Did, Tenaris, did he meet with Sandy Nelson? Did he meet with Sandy Nelson and Shawnee mm -hmm. Young? Yeah. The two young ladies that lost their job in Saskatchewan no waiver, yeah. due to temporary right. foreign workers I, I well, but haven't terms, been there in terms for 25 of minister, years. engaging with the public, I don't think you could beat Jason Kenny in terms of the I, I know Jason employees. works hard, yeah. but open and transparent, you know, let the committee do it, bring recommendations forward, and then it's bulletproof. When he makes the changes, it's bulletproof. You guys always make so much sense. I don't know why they don't get along like that. Now, a quick last question to you. Jim Prennison, does that mean James <laughs> Rizot is out of the yeah. race to be Alberta's Premier? I, I, I've decided, uh, yes, not to run. Obviously. Obviously, Jim is, is going to run. He hasn't formally announced yet, but it's quite certain that he is. So, I mean, he'll be a very strong candidate. I think we'll see what other candidates come forward. But at this point, I will be competing for the nomination, the federal nomination for Edmonton Riverbend for the next federal good election. Very well, we're always glad. Now, Actually, that's good now news. Jim's job is open. Unless, of course, yeah, Jim's job is open. <laughs> <laughs> if CIBC wants it, uh, <laughs> I will. Uh, I'll even take a 5% pay cut to do that. <laughs> Unless, of course, you want me to co-host this show again. Uh, you know, I think, don't, don't wave that in front of CTV. They might bite. <laughs> All right. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. We'll see you next week.